Our Airbnb business has hosted thousands of guests over the past couple of years, and we're going to share eight major mistakes you need to avoid as new hosts. Plus, we're going to share exactly how much money our Airbnb portfolio has made. We are the Real Estate Robinsons. Hey guys, if this is your first time here, I'm Tony. I'm Sarah. And we're real estate investors who quit our day jobs by investing in short-term rentals. And we're here to show you how you can do the same. If you've been thinking about buying your first Airbnb as an investment, then you'll get a lot of value from today's video. And honestly, even if you already have a property or two, if you're looking to really scale that business, you'll get a ton of value from today's video too. Stick with me, fellas. You'll learn a lot. So today we're gonna share some of the mistakes that we've made while growing our Airbnb business. These are things we wish we would have spent a little bit more time on at the beginning, um, or things we just like literally never even thought about that kind of came back to bite us in the butt. So we, we hope you guys get some value from this. A big goal of our channel is to not just share all of the amazing things that go on in our business, but to really share the ugly parts too. The parts of the business that sometimes make us second guess. Like, like it's just really Yeah, why the hell are we doing <laughs> this? Is it worth it? Yeah. And we share the ugly parts of the business for really two reasons. First, we want you to avoid the same mistakes that we've made, which hopefully increases your chances of being successful at this business. And second, we want you to be fully aware of what you're getting yourself into. It's not all rainbows and butterflies, and we wish we kind of knew everything about the business. So we're here to help you out. Now, luckily today, you'll get a little bit of both, the, the good stuff and the bad stuff. So. We're sharing some of the mistakes we've made along the way, but make sure to stick around until the end of the video because we're also gonna share some yes. good news. Like we're literally going to show you down to the penny how much all of our Airbnbs have made since we started this business. The first three mistakes we'll cover here will be more about general business uh, mistakes we've made. And the last five will be specifically about mistakes we've made running our Airbnbs. So let's dive right in. Now, mistake number one is probably a mistake that most people just make in life uh, in general, but probably in business as well. And that's not setting clear goals at the beginning. So you have to get really clear with yourself about the type of business you want to build, the type of Airbnb business you want to build. Do you want to self-manage or are you going to hire that out to third party property managers? Do you want a portfolio of five Airbnbs or 100? Do you only want to invest in your own neighborhood and your own backyard? Or are you willing to invest remotely like we do? Are you trying to quit your job today as fast as possible? Or are you investing in Airbnbs to maybe diversify your income? Or maybe to give you some extra money when you retire in 20 years? Each one of these decisions will have a really big impact on how you run your business, how you scale your business, and how you make decisions as you're getting started. Someone who wants five Airbnbs over the next 10 years is going to have a completely different approach than someone who wants, let's say, 100 Airbnbs in the next three years. If you want five Airbnbs, you can probably manage that portfolio by yourself completely. You don't really need to invest in a big team. You can be a one-person show. You can buy one property every couple of years and move at a really nice, easy, slow, manageable pace. But if you want to buy 100 Airbnbs in the next three years, you can't do that by yourself. Yeah. You'll need an operations team, you'll need an acquisitions team, you'll probably need like to raise money from other investors. So you'll need like an investor relations person. Maybe you'll need a CFO or a COO. You'd literally have to be buying three properties a month for three years straight to get to 100. And that's, that's a, a lot, lot of acquisitions <laughs> and, and that's a lot of scale. So and our, a lot of work. And know? a lot of work. Yeah. And a ton of work, right? So our point is, you know, the, the goal you set will have a big impact on how you approach your business. So try and get clear on that from the beginning. I think um, had we had a little bit more clarity on our business when we first started, we definitely could have avoided a lot of growing pains we experienced. And honestly, we probably could have scaled even faster, I think. Yeah, we probably would have like hired other people sooner. Yeah. You know, we'll talk about this later, but we would have had a better relationship with like our attorneys and our CPA for sure. Just lot, lots of things would have changed. We didn't even know the vision ourselves, you know? Yeah, I mean, we're just focused on like getting the next property without thinking about what that long-term plan was. Yeah. So now we try and get together with our, our business partner, Omid, and just kind of like, focus on our strategy for the overall business. So like we'll visit our, our 10 year plan and our three year plan and our one year plan and our quarterly goals. And, and that clarity helps us make better decisions about the business. Absolutely. So really getting clear on your goal should be the very first step you take. <sighs> Try to visualize your goal. The next big mistake is not documenting your processes and policies. So no matter how big your business is, you really want to start documenting your processes 
earlier rather than later. So you might be thinking, well, what kind of things do I need to document? You wanna focus on the big, important parts of your business and the pieces that really impact your business regularly. So for example, when it comes to your guests, you wanna document things like how you handle requests for early check-ins. Yeah. Or you know, what do you do when a guest complains that there's a hair in the shower or a the stain on the dirty, sheet, yeah. right? Or how do you respond when a guest asks to cancel, but they're supposed to check in tomorrow? You know, th this was a mistake for us because as our team scaled, we had to kind of scramble to put these processes in place. Like when he says scramble, like truly scramble. But like we're still trying to figure it out, you yeah, know? Yeah, and it's it's a work in progress yeah. because we, we waited too long. Yeah. And you know, honestly, since we were the ones running the business, we never really felt a need to document yeah. anything. Like we had it all in our heads. So whenever yeah, or came we up, knew how to handle, we you know? We just talked to each other really quickly and, you know, it was solved. We were the only ones that needed the information, so it was fine. But once you hire people, you have to get that information out of your head right. and somewhere that's easy for your team members to find and understand. So once we hired people, you know, they had a ton of questions, you know, understanding Blue so yeah. about how they should handle all these different situations and issues that were popping up. And, you know, now we actually recently just sat down and we had a meeting that clarified a lot of the policies and processes in our business, right? And, and I think it's helped because now our team is, they, they're they empowered to kind of make decisions, not necessarily with our approval, they just need to look at the policies and, and make the decisions based on that. Yeah, for example, um, one of our, our operations manager who handles um, whenever there is a guest complaint and is looking for a refund, it was really challenging for her to identify how much of a refund is appropriate for each scenario. And again, like Tony said, before we would just discuss this, we kind of came up with like a process on our own, but we never communicated that in writing to someone or set that person up for success because we didn't have it laid out. So we're working on it, Kellen. So <laughs> yeah, highly recommend you guys do that sooner the better. So the second piece of this is documenting your actual processes. Uh, you need a way to capture the right way to do certain tasks within your business. So the policies were around like the decisions you make, the processes are like the actions that you're taking and, and the way that you do certain things. So like, for example, you, you wanna get clear on like, what's the process for submitting receipts to your bookkeeper? What's the process you should follow when you're setting up a new listing on Airbnb or Verbo? Mm. Uh, what's the process someone should follow when setting up the automated messages inside of your property management software? What's the process you want people to follow when they set up the pricing strategy for your property? These are all of the things that you really want to think through and really clearly document. And it's not even, you keep saying for people, even for yourself, you yeah. know, you might not remember what you did for pricing and all of totally this, true. you know, so That's just something thing. easy for you to refer back to every time you acquire a new property. Now, hearing all of this can sound very overwhelming. Trust me, we know. So instead of trying to document every process in your business, our advice is to focus on those core pieces of your business. The ones that pop up the most often and the things that have the biggest impact um, on profitability. Now, before we keep moving, we would really, really appreciate it if you can give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, hit the little bell for notifications. Every new subscriber really does mean a lot to us. And we've got a big goal of getting to 50,000 yeah. subscribers. We're actually just at 25,000. There's only like a few months left in the year. So <laughs> yeah. if you're enjoying this content, please subscribe, turn on notifications, <laughs> share with somebody. Also connect with us on Instagram. I'm at Tony J. Robinson. My lovely wife is at Sarah Rad. And if you're on TikTok, you can follow us there at The Real Estate Robinsons. We've also got a totally free download for all of our subscribers. So if you head over to alphageekcapital.com forward slash calculator, we've put together a free tool that helps you analyze properties that you're considering purchasing as a short-term rental. Uh, people love it and say it's super helpful, so I definitely recommend checking it out. And alas, if you are not yet an Airbnb host, sign up using our link in the description. Uh, you'll get a cash bonus for signing up and we'll get a little cash bonus for referring you as well. Mistake number three is probably one of the most excruciating mistakes that we've made in our Airbnb business, and that mistake was not managing our books effectively. So uh, That's Tony's worst nightmare. Yeah, right? Because <laughs> bookkeeping is one of those things that you know is important, yeah. but because it's not urgent, you don't focus much time and effort into it. That is until it's time to file your taxes, and then, then it becomes stressful. super urgent. Yeah. And it takes up literally all of your time and your effort because you're trying to cram an entire year of bookkeeping into like 13 days. Yeah. So when we first started our, our Airbnb business, we didn't have a bookkeeper. I was a bookkeeper, but I had so many other things going on in our business that I just wasn't dedicating enough time to, to really keeping our books clean. 
And during those 13 days, Tony was like the bitchiest I've ever known him to be because he was so <laughs> stressed and annoyed. Yeah, because it, it, it was like such a mess when it came time to file taxes. <laughs> I was looking everywhere trying to find receipts and- Asking me. Babe, why did you buy this? Yeah. What was this for? I was like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I was like digging through old emails, looking through like photos of my phone, <laughs> asking Sarah and Omi. I was like, hey, what was this charge for $17.36 from On Amazon? On Tuesday, February 6th. Six at two seven a.m. I'm like, ah. So anyway, our, our recommendation. Very specific stuff. <laughs> yeah, very, and, it, and it's it, I don't recommend it, right? So our recommendation is build your relationship with your CPA from the very beginning, as soon as you close in that first property. Because if your plan is to scale, which is probably the goal for most people watching this, then you need to get your books in order. Yeah, good advice. Yeah. Now, slightly related <laughs> to our bookkeeping is the actual bank that we use. Um, we first started our business. We just created a separate checking account, like in our personal names. Yeah. And we ran everything through there. But you want an actual business bank account for your Airbnb business. And there's you know, a, a lot of benefits that come along with having a, a true business bank account. But we've got an entire video on how we set up our banking for our Airbnb business. So we'll link to that in the description. But if you want to sign up with our bank, we use Relay. Highly, highly recommend Relay. Yeah. Uh, you can use our referral code in the description. And I think you get like a small cash bonus if you sign up using our referral code. So anyway, check them out, Relay. It's literally like changed our business, you know? And last, I say invest in some good bookkeeping software uh, from the beginning uh, when we started our business we were using stessa which is you know it's cool because it was free mm -hmm. uh, but there were some limitations there like the connections kept breaking between the banking software and stessa uh, we had to like manually input things and now we use quickbooks which is so much better um, and as a bonus there's like literally a direct api connection between relay and quickbooks so there's usually never any connection issues or like transactions not showing up because it's like directly connected, which is why we left Stessa. Highly recommend both QuickBooks and Relay. And a bookkeeper. And a bookkeeper. <laughs> the next big mistake you need to avoid is not taking the time to understand the Airbnb permitting process for the city where you're looking to buy your Airbnb. So this is huge. Each city has different processes and rules for managing their Airbnbs. Some places flat out ban Airbnbs and other places might allow Airbnbs, but they'll limit the total number of permits that they'll issue. So for example, we've seen some cities say that there is like a 500 permit cap. So once those 500 permits are taken, the only way for someone to get a new permit is if someone who already has a permit either sells their property or they lose their permit for not following the rules. Yeah, you know, we've seen some cities that say the cap is a percentage of the available housing supply. So say a city has, you know, 100,000 homes, maybe the cap of the total number of Airbnbs is 10% or 10% of 100,000 is 1,000, right? Good um, so whatever that, that number breaks out to be, we've seen it done both ways. And there are some cities who won't cap the number of permits, but they might restrict what parts of the city uh, Airbnbs are allowed to operate in. So instead of saying that I was going to just like open up an Airbnb anywhere in the city, mm. it might be restricted to certain blocks. And then of course, there are the cities that don't have any kind of rules whatsoever. And it's like literally the wild, wild west out there. You're going to come across tons of different rules and permitting processes and application fees. But our point here is that you really need to understand what the permitting process looks like for whatever city you're interested in investing in. We actually recently had a property that we had to shut down uh, yeah. because we messed up on the application. So literally we had to, the property's already listed. We already had yeah. guests coming in. We literally had to delist a property from both Verbo and Airbnb. And we're literally paying a mortgage right now yeah. with zero dollars coming in because we didn't understand this really small detail about the application process. And they probably didn't do a good job of communicating to us before, but that's besides the point, right? That's like true. we should have, you know, maybe done some more homework. So we literally had to restart the entire application process all over again. So yeah. there really is a real cost to messing up the step and making that mistake. So learn from us. Don't make the same mistakes I did. The next mistake has to do with your support staff. Every Airbnb owner needs to find a really good cleaner and a really good handyman. And once you find a good one, it can be super easy to take that person for granted. And that would be a super, super massive mistake that you don't want for yourself. Yeah, like seriously. Yeah. Yeah, like your, your cleaner and your handyman are the two people that you 1,000, 1 million, 1 billion percent need to run your Airbnb business. Yeah. And this is even more true for the people that are managing their Airbnbs remotely like we do. So you, you need to make sure that you take care of those people. You know, like pay them competitive rates, pay them on time, 
you know, pay them what you say you're going to pay them. And when they voice concerns to you about the property or your guests, listen, yeah. and then act on those concerns. Because if your team is telling you, hey, this thing is making my job harder and you don't do anything about it, they're gonna piss them off. And we've heard plenty of horror stories of Airbnb owners posting on Facebook groups saying my cleaner just bailed last minute and I have a guest checking in in 45 minutes. We hear it all the time, so trust me, it happens. And you don't ever want to be in that position. So invest your time and energy into your team and really, truly taking care of them. We even invest additional money into our team. Um, we recently hosted a dinner for our cleaners and handymen in Joshua Tree, um, just as a thank you for all of the hard work they do. So it was, I loved it. it was, and I could tell they really appreciated, appreciated that. Yeah. And something else I wanna add is take their feedback, give them the opportunity to give you feedback for your own property or, or how to, run your rules or something. Uh, our cleaners do that often, our handymen, and it's actually super helpful for us as hosts because the, the cleaners and handymen are the, the people that are actually at your property. So if they can get creative and, and come up with different rules or suggestions that can make your life easier as a host, like just make them feel welcomed and you're open to suggestions. Yeah, we'll, we'll also like give our cleaners and our handymen like bonuses when their birthdays come around. Yeah. Um, we'll pay them extra if the guest leaves like a, a super complete total mess. Mm -hmm. So anyway, not like just not investing in your cleaners and your handymen or being cheap and going with the one that charges you the least instead of the one that can do a really good job will literally derail your business, hurt your profitability and make managing your Airbnbs exponentially harder. All right, the next mistake is running your Airbnb the old fashioned way and not leveraging all of the automation software that's available for Airbnbs today. Now, when we first started, uh, we weren't using all the tools that we're using today. And as our business expands, we continue to add more tools. Yeah, um, we're just like adding the other one, Breezeway. Yeah, so you know, we have software for analyzing deals, for managing our cleaners, for managing maintenance requests, for pricing our property, optimizing our listing, communicating with our guests, uh, providing directions on how to use the properties and, and literally so much more. Our technology stack has continued to, to grow as the business scales. And those tools literally dramatically reduce the amount of time we need to spend managing each property. When we first started our Airbnb business, one of the things we hadn't figured out was how to automate sharing our booking information with our cleaners. So literally every week we would just screenshot our Airbnb calendar and text it to our cleaners. And if there was a last minute booking or cancellation, we had to scramble and figure out like, did you tell them, did you tell them? So it was just too time consuming and pretty annoying for everyone really. So now we have systems and our tools in place so that our cleaners are automatically notified anytime someone books a property. And even if they cancel or alter their reservation, our cleaners are also automatically notified. So it's a massive time saver and like, we don't have any more like annoying text messages going off every two seconds, you know? And I know um, not everybody is super tech savvy. I'm not either. So having all of these, you know, um, tools and software that you need to learn and download and figure out and set up can be very overwhelming. Luckily, Tony is pretty techy, so he does it all for, for our business. But, um, it, yeah, it is super, super helpful to have these in place for your business. Okay, I'm pretty hesitant at first. Like, I'm like, God, another freaking app? Like, how many do we need? But then I figure out how to use it, and it's, like, amazing. So if you're like me, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and it's beneficial to you. So mistake number seven, and I think this is something that Sarah probably struggled with more than I did, and it's not taking the things that your guests say to you too personally. I was um, getting real sad <laughs> and stressed. Yeah. You know, like when you run an Airbnb business, you're going to come across people from different walks of life. Uh, and some of those people are exceptionally kind and warm and wonderful. Yeah. And other people are legit straight up Amen. And there are times when guests can be super rude or mean and just say all kinds of crazy stuff, but you, you can't let it bother you. You've got to have thick skin. Yeah, you got to learn. Some people don't naturally have that, you That's know? That's true. Yeah. When you start an Airbnb business, um, you're going to get into the hospitality game, really. And with that, you've got to realize that you'll be dealing with all types of people. This isn't like long-term rentals where you just have that one family staying at your property for a year or multiple years in some cases. You'll literally have a different 
person and type of person at your property every couple every of days. days. Yeah. And when one of those guests um, turns out to be a jerk, uh, just try not to let that rattle you. Give them the best service that you can and be happy that you'll only have to deal with them <laughs> for a few days. That's the way I've started to look at things. Yeah. Literally, like when we have an annoying guest, like the first thing we do is say, how many days are they there? Yeah. And it's like, oh, cool. They're checking out tomorrow. Yeah. Um, sometimes we get us like, God, they're here for like Ugh, seven days. Those are the worst. Yeah, so it's like, you know, you roll the punches and seven yeah. days, it's it's gone before you know it. Yeah, but they are freaking annoying and they won't stop. If they were already annoying on day one, they're going to be annoying on day two, three, so just four, accept five, it. six, seven. Yeah. Just accept it. Yeah, I would say um, I would get really stressed when something would go wrong. They weren't necessarily jerks, but like I would say even when something goes wrong at your property and someone even nicely brings it to your attention, I used to like panic, you know, like, oh my God, I need to call a handyman at 2 a.m. and fix it. And it's like, girl, they are fine. It's not the end of the world, you know? Like, would a, ho a hotel even do that? No. What do you mean? I mean, it might depend, you know? I don't think so. But our point is, don't stress too much. The last mistake we'll talk about is not getting too emotionally attached to your property. Now, we know that you've probably put in a lot of time, hard work, and energy setting up your Airbnb. Money money, yeah. right? Especially if it's your first one. Maybe you, you curated a bunch of really cool design pieces from these different trendy furniture spots. And maybe you spent then a bunch of days like actually building that furniture and yeah. getting the property ready. Like that's what we did when we first got we started. Yeah. Maybe you even did some of the rehab yourself, you know, paint some walls, laying tile and sawing flooring. Uh, but the point is, it doesn't matter how much time, energy, money, and love you put into your Airbnb, for the people that are staying at that property, they it's just another property, care. it's just another yes. Airbnb. And some people will respect your, your your place, right? Like it's their own, but others won't. No. Things are going to break. You're gonna have to replace that wallpaper. You're gonna have to eventually buy a new couch. Uh, these are all things that we've like literally recently had to replace. The yeah. the nightstand, the bed frames, paint's gonna be need to be repainted. Like the, the lamp is gonna break. Like, like things mm -hmm. are going to break. Like we even had a small bear statue at one of our cabins. You remember this? Yeah. And like it was downstairs. And when our cleaners got there, they had moved the bear statue from downstairs to upstairs and the ear was broken off. Do you remember it was our first guest? It was the first guest yeah. to check in there. You know, it's like. like and I remember the bear because we were like, oh, look at these funny, cute bears. Like, should we keep this bear? And we're like, yeah, let's keep this weird, cute bear. <laughs> and the freaking cute bear got his ear chopped off. Yeah. So the point is things are 100% going to break and you can't be so emotionally attached to the property or the things inside of the property because at some point, it'll probably need to be replaced. And you'll seriously just create more stress for yourself if you're so worried about the things inside of your property, like the bear's ear. And if you try and protect your stuff by creating all of these crazy house rules, you're just going to make the experience for your guests less enjoyable. We've seen some hosts who create these super lengthy, super detailed house rules about how guests can't touch this thing or can't use this thing because it has sentimental value or whatever. And if it just has that much sentimental value to you, just don't even put it inside of your Airbnb. If it's super unique and can't be replaced, you should probably not even put that inside of your Airbnb. As a blanket rule, everything you buy for your Airbnb should be durable, but replaceable. We made the mistake once of buying an all white couch, which we've talked about, <laughs> and it was literally ruined by the second guest. So just take our word for it and don't get too emotionally attached to your property. All right, so now that we've shared some of the mistakes that we've made, let's get into the good stuff, some good news. Yes. Let's oh. talk about how much money we've made by starting an Airbnb business. Now, before we share our numbers, we wanna make a few things clear, okay? First, we're 100% not sharing these numbers to boast or brag, uh, and we really do hope it doesn't come across that way. We're, we're sharing these numbers to motivate and inspire you to get started. And just, that's what our channel's all about, being transparent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and second, we have partners on the majority of these properties, so it's, we are definitely not pocketing all this money either. Nope. Uh, it gets split up between us and the people we invest with. Um, you know, we recently put out a video about us becoming millionaires, but just because we have a net worth of a million dollars does not mean we have a million dollars in the bank. No, we, um, we We do not even have anything <laughs> close to a million bucks in the bank. Um, but One yeah, day we will, we but will. so far, no. And we love our partners and we love sharing profits with our partners. Okay. So with that out the way, let's, uh, let's get to the numbers. All right, so we're gonna break it down by the year. 
um, and then we're gonna give you a total at the end. So we bought our first Airbnb in August of 2020, and our second one in September of 2020, and then our last one in November of 2020. And usually it took us about a month for each one of those properties to get them set up. Like the, the third property li literally didn't go live until like the very last week of December. But even with those, we still did $56,197.15 in revenue on Airbnb. And we didn't do any revenue on Burbo because we didn't set up Burbo until the next year. So the total for 2020 was $56,197.15, which is not bad for like four months kind of with yeah. one and a half-ish properties. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. For 2021, we sold one property and purchased 10 more, bringing our total portfolio at the end of 2021 to a total of 12 properties. And those properties closed at different times throughout the whole year, uh, some in January, a handful in the springtime, and then a few more in winter and fall. So the majority of the properties in our portfolio weren't active for the entire year. But for Verbo, we did $56,351.30 in revenue, and Airbnb did another $576,919.83. So that brings our total revenue for 2021 to up freaking $633,271.13. Now, this is also the year that we went full time into the business. Yeah. So, you know, we, we had all of our energy focused on this one thing. So that, like, that's why we scaled, I think, relatively quickly. Yes. Because it was, it was we were all in. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's talk 2022. So for this year, obviously we're still in this year. So we're just going to go year to date, which is about halfway through August. Um, so for Verbo, so far this year, we've done $78,920.83 in revenue. And on Airbnb, we did another $741,209.15, which brings our total revenue year to date to $820,129.98. Are you kidding? Yeah, serious, right? Um, I feel pretty comfortable saying that we'll do about 1.5 million in total revenue this year. Uh, we have a handful of properties coming online uh, during the back half of the year, and the holidays are pretty busy. Um, in each of the markets we invest in. Oh my gosh. Tony, Tony handles all of the the payouts and I'm shocked. Why haven't you told me? We literally get an email from our, our bookkeeper every month. That but shows, why would I read those emails? You handle that stuff. But at least open it. I mean, you could have talked to me about it. Whoa, I'm hyped. Yeah. That's amazing. It is, yeah. What? Serious, I'm shocked. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's okay. good news, right? Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, honestly, I feel like we probably could have hit two million, but we've got some new construction projects that are like way behind. Hella behind. Like way yes. behind. Like they were supposed to be done like a year ago, and then it was supposed to be spring of this year, and then fall of Which this ones? year. Which ones? Oh, the new construction. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, had those been done, like we we uh, we would have we would have done over two million. Well, years. I'm still like um, mind blown. Yeah. So that that's kind of where we're at. So 1.5, I think is a safe bet for. Anyway, if you add up 2020, 2021, and 2022, we've done $1,509,598.26 on Airbnb wow. uh, and Verbo since going live in 2020, which is not bad for, for two years. Now we will say it has been an absolute grind for us since starting this business. Yeah. Uh, I literally tell people this when they ask me and I'm not joking. I feel like crying maybe like every other weekend. So like that's how hard we are working in this business. Well, we bought three properties in the last four months of 2020. We bought another 10 properties in 2021. Uh, that's literally almost one property a month, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, in 2022, we've already purchased 13 properties, which is almost two properties a month. So that's why I've been feeling like I want to cry. Yeah, you know, like right now we've got four <laughs> rehabs going on. Yeah. We just launched three tiny homes last month. Can I just break that down? Like you're saying a very loosey goosey, okay? So Tony finds the deals and analyzes, whatever, finds blah, blah, blah. Yeah, 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 the back stuff. Once he locks in the property, he passes the baton to me. I'm the one that coordinates with our interior designer, ordering all the stuff, um, dealing with our handyman. Anyways, we had four rehabs, right? Like cos full cosmetic rehabs. And we had, uh, how many tiny homes? Four. No, girl. What do you mean yeah, four? Yeah, four. Which four? Lynn, Candela, First, Adobe. Yeah, that's just four. We have these four more. 
Wait, what? No, it's just those four. Oh, it's because I just finished those. Oh, yeah, so it's a total of eight. No, 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 it's more than that, baby. It was ten. No. Okay, see, I'm lost. But anyways, it was about eight properties that I had actively, like, going on that I was in charge of going every week, making sure that we're, like, progressing along, making sure all the deliveries, which are show just in case you're not aware of that it's almost always a mess that's why i was crying every other weekend but that's hard work and moving at that pace keeping all of the active properties performing as well while also finding rehabbing and setting up the properties it's it's a lot yeah i mean we, we had a lot of moments during this past year where we felt overwhelmed like sarah said um but you know we've added people to the team we're, we're still growing in that way amazing um, people amazing like you guys are watching people. this i literally we love you guys yeah uh, but this this type of growth and scale isn't for the faint of hearts no. but it is possible and for us the journey has been so absolutely worth it yes all right so hey we hope you found this both uh inspirational and hopefully you got some actionable steps if you've stuck around until the very end and you'd like more information on our new Airbnb coaching program, uh, then check the link in our description. Uh, we are beta testing yeah, this coaching program right excited. now. Uh, so we're offering it at a, like, honestly a crazy discount. Like the amount of value that yeah. we're giving away for this price is, is un, unreal. Like seriously. Um, so if you want to book a call, <laughs> <We get it. laughs> so if you want to book a call to learn more, uh, you can check out the link in our bio or in the description here, or head over to the real slash book a call. Uh, cool. Well, if you guys have any follow-up questions, please drop a comment below. We'll do our best to answer them. That's it for today, guys. I'm Tony. I'm Sarah. And we are the, the Real, Real Estate, Estate Robinsons. Robinsons.